Today's dairy farming serves to illustrate the globalisation of our food production. Largely controlled by large food processors and supermarkets. This change has happened gradually over the last generation or so of dairy farmers. Not so long ago each small area or village had their own local dairy farm which delivered milk daily to their doorstep. On the whole these have all gone to the extent that milk is now traded and transported around the world in a similar time it was delivered to the local doorstep. Dairy farmers have had to adapt and become more efficient to survive in this global market of large multinational dairies and supermarkets. Today's dairy farmer must now produce milk within a price dictated by these large companies who form the market for the majority of the milk produced. The price per litre a farmer is given for his milk is often less than what it costs him to produce a litre of milk. This means the farmer will lose money on every litre of milk he sells. In fact the price he gets from milk is often less than the price he pays for the water the cows drink. This has generally meant the end of the small family dairy farm as the only way they could survive was to become more efficient. Becoming efficient has meant each farmer must keep more cows and get as much milk as possible from each cow. Doing this means the farmer is able to spread their costs over more litres of milk produced. It is called an economy of scale. How much milk a cow produces is controlled by the cow's breeding or genes and its environment. That's how well it is looked after and how well it is fed. One of the main costs of keeping dairy cows is their feed. So feeding a dairy cow the right amount of a balanced diet to achieve the maximum yield of milk but with as cheap a price as possible is now very important to a dairy farmer. With dairy cows producing as much as 60 litres of milk per day they cannot get enough nutrients from just eating grass. So they will also be fed extra food called concentrates. This is a mixture of other foods such as soya beans, rapeseed meal or wheat. This extra food is fed according to what each cow needs, as Mr. Birdus explained. This is all related to how much feed I feed in the outer pile of feeders, where they're going with their collars. Mm -hmm. and it, so we build it up to 50 days where they're getting 7 kilos and then after that it depends on yield what they're fed. The computer identifies each cow by a special transponder it carries in its collar. So each cow gets just the right amount of the balanced diet it needs. Just one example of how technology is used to feed dairy cows, making dairy farming more efficient and sustainable.